Hey, what's going on guys? This is going to be my auto box review here for Bandai's high grade 160 scale arm slave Levitane version IV or version four, whatever you want to say. This is Bandai's version of the Levitane and it is pretty awesome. So I previously built and reviewed the Aoshima version, which is a larger 148 scale. Uh, basically consider this about the size of a high grade, though bigger, and then consider the 160 scale about the size of a master grade. So it's kind of like comparing the two of those. Unfortunately, as I said in the unboxing video, I can't show them to you side by side as my Aoshima 160 scale kit is currently completely deconstructed because I'm getting ready to paint that kit soon. That said, I did recently get the final battle version of that kit and I will be building and reviewing that for you guys sometime in the near future as soon as I can. And also Kotobukiya also makes a version of this which I do not have and I don't plan to get. I'll talk about some of the proportion differences and different accessory differences and things like that later on in the review. But first off, just as always guys, a huge thank you to SA Gundam Store for sponsoring the review. Check the link to their site down below and the coupon code there as well. And let's get into talking about all of the stuff that this kit does come with. Okay, so the first thing that this kit comes with is stickers, foil stickers, not like marking stickers or anything like that, none of that, but it does have a lot of stickers on this kit. So let's go through some of them here on the head. Of course, we have stickers for the eyes, no surprise there. For these little orange bits on the side of the head, stickers there. These little orange bits on the kind of side in between those white parts there on the head, also stickers. This part here on the top of the head, sticker. That orange part there on the back of the head, sticker. Down here on the crotch part, sticker there, but that's also the same on Bendai's Gernsback and Arbalest kits. They also have the same sticker on there. And then down here on the feet, we have a little orange sticker there on the ankle armor. But one great advantage that this has over the Aoshima version is that on the Aoshima version, uh, that, that doesn't have any orange plastic at all. The fact that this is orange plastic here, here, and then all through the arm, that's all actual orange plastic rather than being just orange stickers as on the Aoshima version. That's definitely points to Bandai's version. But the head, of course, has a lot of stickers on there just because there's a lot of different colors going on in such a small little area. So it's kind of understandable. It is unfortunate though, there are so many stickers on the head. Moving on to hands, we've got the open hands, which I've got there on the kit already. Those are very nice. We do also have a set of regular holding hands, which have the kind of inside of the hand molded on the inside of there, so they don't really look too good. I kind of would have rather had these traded out for just a set of closed fists, because then we do also have a set of trigger finger hands as well. So I would have rather used the trigger finger hands for just like holding guns and or anything, and then a set of closed fists as well. But there you go. That's what we got for hand options. We have the Levitine's signature ponytail, which is molded in clear yellow. Again, the Aoshima version, I believe the code versions as well are also molded in just plain clear so if you wanted to paint this in a different color this version is going to be a little bit harder to do that with the other versions of the kit you can paint that in any color that you would like we have the knee knives which are pretty cool they're actually called uh, monomolecular cutters so these are actually meant to go into the knee what you'll do is just remove the blade part here from the front like that fold this down like so and then our knee armor folds forward and you can plug this into the back of that. And then that just kind of makes a little bit more complicated looking bit of knee armor there for that. It's pretty cool. Again, I prefer the Aoshima version of this where uh, that's just kind of this whole thing just fits as the knee armor on it. I'll put a picture of that here on the side so you can see for comparison. We've got the smoke dischargers. These are pretty cool. And I don't know about the Kotobukiya kit actually offhand, but I know the Aoshima version of the kit does not have these included. So this is something uh, that this kit does have. These fit up here on top of the shoulder actually. So those will sit up on top of there. Those can be rotated side to side and also up and down like that. So that's pretty cool. You do also have a hole on the top of there. So I guess if you really wanted, you could actually kind of maybe st stack these on top of each other, I guess, something like that. It looks a bit goofy, but I guess you could do that if you wanted. Then you have these bits, which as far as I can tell, I think are just basically just weapon racks, which also plug on top of the shoulder. And you can plug the uh, big gun, which we'll take a look at in a second onto that. But this just goes onto the top of there like that. Again, I'm not familiar with the source material at all, so guys, don't hold that too much against me as I don't really know what a lot of this stuff is. And then we have the Lambda Driver Cancelers. These are pretty cool and pretty nicely detailed, although we do have some more stickers on here. The gray bits inside of there, those are stickers, and then the little wing tips, those are little white stickers on there. The wing tips I can understand, however, the gray bits I think could have been a separate gray part to go inside of there, so that's a little bit unfortunate that those were a sticker. That white part, though, is separate. So basically for this, you'll just remove this part here on the shoulder and just swap that out with these bits here so you can can see where that would go on there instead of this. We'll take a look at that here in a bit. We've got two of these little tiny connector pieces and what these are for is for the gimmick of these kind of extra arms that it has in its torso. So this bottom part of the side of its torso there is actually an extra arm which folds out. But on this one you have to kind of just part swap a little bit by adding in this extra little joint part. So that part that we removed from the bottom of the chest there you can see has this little uh, gripper handle which will fold out like that and you can then rotate that as well. 
So we'll use this little bit to plug into there, plug that back up into there. And just for demonstration's sake, we'll use one of these sword bits, although the manual shows you to use it with uh, the shotgun from the Arbalest kit. So there you go, that fits into there like that. I think a gun would probably definitely be a little bit better just because with the knife and very limited movement with this and it being so close to the body, you probably wouldn't be able to do a whole lot offensively with this. Could work kind of defensively, but with a gun just kind of having there, it just basically makes gives you a way to just mount an extra gun like straight to his chest or two guns if you wanted to have one on each side. Again, the Aoshima version is a little bit more complex, a little bit more working, moving parts in there. You think you can do a little bit more with it. This one's very simple, but it is still pretty cool they engineered that into this smaller version of the kit. And finally, last but not least, is of course the giant demolition gun. Now this thing is pretty awesome. We have this little bit that folds out there on the side, a secondary handle for that which folds out like that. The main handle is here. This does also fold up by extending this part here in the center. Just separate that out a little bit. Rotate this to the side. Rotate this whole thing around. Clip that into place there at the back. And there you go. Then it's folded up like that. You can also just simply remove this. This is actually the core demolition gun as it is. Uh, with this bit here on the end, that's it's a howitzer mode, I guess. And so this is kind of, I guess, it's just the standard demolition gun. But of course, we're going to use it with the big howitzer attachment on it. And this can be plugged up onto the top of the weapons rack on top of the shoulder with a couple of different connection pieces. This one, which will plug it on at just kind of a lower angle like that or this other one, which will plug it up onto the shoulder a little bit higher like that. So really not too much of a difference with that, but you do have a couple options, so that's pretty nice. And so here's the size comparison with Bandai's 160 scale Arbalest kit, as well as the ARC-782 Gundam high-grade kit. So as you can tell, definitely bigger than your average high-grade Gundam, and the Levitine actually coming out to be a little bit taller than the Arbalest as well. That, I believe, is canon, as I think I've heard from you guys that the Levitine is a little bit larger than the Arbalest. I think where a lot of that is coming into play is that the legs, the legs of the Levitine especially, are much larger, very big, bulky, thick boy legs on that guy for sure. All that said, let's run through the articulation. So head will go up to there, down to there. This part where it leans forward, I've been told is actually part of the design that I guess that's the cockpit hatch, apparently. I could be wrong about that. The shoulder will pull forward very nicely on that swinging polycap, but then the whole side of the torso also opens up more for even more movement forward there at the shoulder. The shoulder armor can move up by itself, although not that far. It's going to run into the torso there. You can bring the arm up only to about 90 degrees, which is not that much, unfortunately. Standard movement here in the arm, rotation there at the top, double joint at the elbow, giving you a pretty full bend there, as much as the design will allow. The hand is on a ball joint, but if it's pushed in all the way, it will only rotate. If you want to pull it off there a little bit, then you can get more bend there in the wrist. I realize how that sounds, depending on your country of origin. Movement here in the torso, front and back there. We have some very nice side to side here as well. Very good. Rotation as well, no problem at all. No front skirts to speak of. Back skirts, though, however, will move up and down a little bit that they are. The hip joints have this kind of odd gimmick where this whole hip section will slide down a little bit like that. That will simply further allow you to bring the leg up forward and bend it like that for a kneeling pose. But with no skirt armor, the legs can come all the way up to the side there. No problems with that. Rotation here at the top. With the hip joint pulled down, you can get the legs forward all the way out to there to about 90 degrees. If you go out to the side a little bit, you can actually get the leg all the way up further to there. Double joint here in the knee for a nice full bend there, but no separation of the knee armor, unfortunately. Down here at the ankle, this bit will move a little bit up and down on its own. This bit on the back will also move a little bit on its own there. The ankles side to side is pretty good. Ankle can move all the way to the front there, very nice, and then all the way back to the back there, also pretty good. Up underneath the feet, we do have a little bit of hollow, a little bit of detail, kind of a mix of the two, otherwise not really too bad. So as you can see, the articulation is pretty awesome for this kit. You will have no problems getting this into all sorts of really awesome poses. And with all of those different accessories as well, you got some pretty cool options there. I will say though, as far as all the different weapons and accessories that it does have, the weapons, I mean, it basically got just the knives and the giant gun. So I think pretty much most people are pretty much just going to be sticking with the giant gun for the most part. It is still cool to have the different options for like the shoulders, uh, the knees, and uh, the different like weapon racks, things on the on top of the shoulders, especially if you're the kind of person who's a big fan of the series and you care about maybe showing some particular scene or some different uh, weapons or equipment that you really want to display this with, then it's nice to have all those different options. In terms of like just usable weapons that I feel like 95% of people who have this kit are going to be displaying it with the demolition gun.
Oh, well, I suppose I did also kind of forget about the smoke dischargers there on top of the shoulders as well. Those are pretty cool weapons, but again, not really handheld. Anyway, let's talk about the negatives of the kit, as there really aren't too many of them. As we covered before, quite a lot of stickers. That's going to be a little bit disappointing for those people who really don't like using stickers. There are going to be quite a few missing color apps. I think even if you do use the stickers, there are still going to be missing color apps, just because it is a it is a high grade at the end of the day. While it's better than I think a lot of Bandai's high grade gunpla kits, and very nicely detailed, definitely a lot more detailed than most high grade gunpla kits, it's still a high grade, so it's not going to be super complicated, but it is definitely going to be better than most carrying the high grade kit name. And so in conclusion, guys, this is a pretty awesome kit. If you're in the mood for building something a little bit different from your standard Gumpla, and definitely check this out. Of course, if you're a fan of the series and check it out as well, how this compares to the Aoshima version, obviously Bandai's color separation is better. The details is probably a little bit better. Um, the fitting is better. Aoshima's kit uh, was a little bit loose here and there. It's definitely going to take some glue with Bandai. Of course, their modern kits, there's no glue, glue required at all. Uh, if you have the Arbalest or the Gernsback kits already, then of course all the weapons and everything is compatible, so you can uh, mix and match some of those weapons if you wanted to do that. So as for this kit on its own, I can absolutely recommend it to just pretty much anyone. It's a really nice, really fun kit. A little bit expensive, I'll admit that for sure, but definitely worth it if you are a fan of what you've seen here. It's a really nice, good, solid kit for sure. Now, how does it compare to the other two versions, the Kotobukiya and the Aoshima versions? Uh, ultimately, without building the Kotobukiya version, which version of the three would I most recommend to you guys? I would say probably this one, as I think this is probably the, the most uh, user friendly version. It's the easiest one probably of them. The only advantage that I would give to the Aoshima version is basically just that it's larger. There are aesthetic things, little bits of design changes here and there that you might like. For example, I talked about the knee earlier. I prefer the knee design on the Aoshima version. So there's things like that. You may prefer one version or the other, but this is definitely the better kit overall. Uh, just check them both out. As far as the Kotobukiya kit, I just don't like the proportions of the Kotobukiya version at all. So I don't really I haven't really cared to look any further past that, just the, the proportions just don't look good to me straight off the bat, so that's just my personal opinion. What do you guys think though? Have you built the Kotobuki version? Have you built the Aoshima version? What do you think about the different versions of them? What do you think about Bandai's line in general? Falk and the Flight Pack version of the Arbalest are coming out in the next couple months. I don't plan on getting those, but if you would really like to see me review one of those, then maybe leave a comment down below and let me know. Uh, otherwise, I'll probably just gonna be skipping those. So let me know what you think down there in the comment section. And as always, guys, if you have any other further questions or comments, feel free to leave those down there as well. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Remember, if you want to check the kit out for yourself, you can head over to USA Gundam store, use that coupon code ZAKUARILIUS10, save yourself 10%. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.